Alright guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is actually change the theme of this ArcGIS Pro because it's way too bright. It hurts my eyes. So if we go to Project and then Options and then General Application Theme, you can change it to Dark. And this will just make it look cooler, first of all, and it'll not hurt my eyes as much. So I believe it said we have to restart Pro, so I'm just going to close out of Pro and then restart it. And you guys don't have to do this. I'm just doing it because I like it. I'm used to the darker backgrounds. So I'm just going to open a blank map here. And I'm also going to change my base map. So this is cool, but there's a bunch of other cool base maps. So if you go to the map tab, so Pro is kind of set up like Microsoft Office. Like they have all these tabs here. Um, so we want to go to the map tab and then go to base map. And then here, these are all coming from ArcGIS Online, so you have a bunch of different cool options. Um, I just like this light gray canvas because it's kind of, it's simpler and light, lightweight, just easier to look at. Um, but yeah, we were talking about building that mosaic data set. So how are we, where are we going to get this S3 data? So Amazon has a ton of like free S3 data that they host. So if you just type AWS S3 open registry in Google Chrome or in your browser it doesn't have to be Chrome but I'll just click on this registry of open data and you can see they have a ton of just free data sets you can access so they have stuff about cancer um, a bunch of satellite imagery uh, there's COVID data on here there's like machine learning data sets like training data sets um, but what I've found for the purposes of, the, of these videos there's this thing called the New Jersey Statewide Digital Aerial Imagery Catalog. This is pretty sweet. So this is aerial imagery. It's not satellite. So this basically means that it's from like an airplane. Uh, so, so the resolution is a lot higher than satellite imagery. And this is what I was showing you in the first video. I was pulling imagery from this S3 bucket. Um, now, if you have no idea what S3 is or how it works, that's all right. I'm going to show you how we can do that here. Um, so the first thing we need, uh, we need the AWS command line. Well, technically, we don't need it, but I'm just going to have you guys download it because it's easier to work with. Um, so this is basically a way we can use our command line to access the data in S3. So that's what we're going to do first. We're going to download the AWS command line. So just Google AWS CLI, and then just type that. And then I'm on Windows, so I'm going to run this installer. Alright, it's almost done. Got to wait till that blue thing finishes. Okay, now we're good to click it. Alright, so I'm just going to click next. Just keep everything default. The cool thing is we don't need to have any AWS account. This, this bucket's totally public, so um, it's, uh, you know, easy to access all this data for free, which is awesome. All right, so just click finish. Um, so now I'm going to close that window. If we go to our command line now, we should be able to open it and then type AWS. So if you can do this, that means you've installed AWS correctly. And it's actually giving us an error because it's saying the following arguments are required, a command. So we didn't give it any command. So that's what we need to do next. We have to say, um, we're actually going to copy what's on this website. So they're saying this is how you can access that data in S3. So what this notation is, it's AWS, which is like what the command is or what the program is basically. So that's what we just installed. We just installed AWS. And then it's saying S3. So it's like what service in AWS do you want to use? So not only can we use S3, we can use like EC2, for example. We could, we could start servers with this, but we're just going to say S3. We're going to say ls, which means list, basically. Same as like if you were to say dir, like uh, in Windows, basically list all the contents. And then we're saying, what contents do you want to list? And now it's actually giving us a location in S3. So this is the name of the bucket, njogis-imagery. And then that's it. We're just saying list that whole bucket. So we want to list that bucket. 
and then do this no sign request which we need to do that because we don't have an account set up uh, so just copy it just like that and then hit enter and you should see we should see a bunch of stuff get listed so these are basically just folders so now we want to go further down so we need to say we don't want to look at the top route we want to go into this particular folder so let's go in 2015 just because it's the latest data and click enter alright and now we have two more folders there's cog and SID so cog these are both file formats so cog is stands for cloud optimized geotiff it's basically a, a very performant uh, format for for geotiffs in the cloud it's basically it's meant to be um, it streams faster in the cloud so that's what we're going to use SID is just another um, file format imagery format but we're not going to use that so just click cog okay so you see it's it's listing all the contents that are in that bucket in that particular folder and technically these aren't they're not called folders they're called prefixes um, so this is the bucket and everything we tacked on after it was a prefix um, but now what we need to do now that we have this data I'm going to show you how we can make this work in in ArcGIS Pro so what we need to do is copy the bucket this is called the bucket and then this is everything after it is the key technically so just copy all this and I'm gonna open up notepad and I'm just gonna throw it in here just to work with it so it's cleaner to work with so again that's the bucket this is the key Oh, that's not the key sorry that's well technically it's the key but we also we have to add the particular file we're talking about too so that is what we need in addition to that you know how we have this s3 like notation here we need to use something called vsis3 vsi s3 for s like s3 bucket this is basically a way that arcgis pro handles s3 imagery and it's technically under the hood it's um, gdaw that's doing the work so gdaw it's this raster library it's open source but arcgis pro uses it under the hood um, so we just need to give it that and then we need to give it the bucket and slash and then give it the key okay and this is going to be basically our path to the data so instead of, you know, giving it a path on our like D drive, for example, we're giving it that path. And a quick way to make sure that this works is instead of like making a, a mosaic data set and going through all that hassle, just to make sure it works, we can use this tool called Make Raster Layer. So if you go to the Analysis tab here and click Tools, and type Make Raster Layer. Just click that and basically paste that in and then it should start uh, it'll automatically populate this with just some generic name and it should populate these coordinates so that's a good sign if this happens that means that it was able to connect to the bucket and basically read this data from it and just click run let's give it a few seconds so think of make raster layer as as basically just dragging an image into the map. So that's kind of like what this is doing. So once this finishes, you'll see that we'll have a new layer, and it's just it's just the image, um, not part of any data set. It's, it's literally just like dragging the image in. Okay, so there you go. So this is coming from S3. So what we're seeing here is this file in S3. And the cool part is it's totally free. It's it's really high resolution. Um, give it a second. Compared to satellite imagery. So you see it's it's, it's kind of slow because it is coming from S3. It's not on our local file system, but we'll give it some slack. This is pretty 
pretty fast in the grand scheme of things. Um, so yeah, I think that's where I'll cut this video off. Um, in the next video, I think I'll just quickly show you like how we would make a mosaic data set in, in the pro GUI, and then we'll start using Python to go through this whole process. Uh, cause that's why you guys are here probably just more to learn Python. Um, yeah, see you in the next video.